Vibrations Podcast, Part 18, Jenny Quinton. Hi, I'm Gary Brightman, and this is my weekly podcast called Vibrations. Established in 2018, Vibe is a book and music shop situated in Moi Wo on Lantau Island in Hong Kong. So what's been happening at the shop over the past week? Last week was Chinese New Year, and we've now entered the Year of the Metal Ox, as the Chinese Zodiac also covers five elements. Wood, fire, earth, metal and water. The ox year of 2021 is under the influence of the metal element, just like the year of the rat in 2020. This year predicts new career opportunities, so don't let anxiety or negative thinking affect you. Those who are born under the ox sign are independent and strong people, but very stubborn. I've never seen Moiwo so busy, not even in the good old days when the mainland tourists descended upon us for the summer. And thankfully, some of it rubbed off on us, and Vibe was busy. With nowhere else to go this year, for the planet's largest migration of people, Lantau Island has now firmly become a destination. Staycations, walking, jogging, running, camping, mountain biking, beaches, fresher air and back to nature. Hong Kongers have once again started to reinvent themselves. With temperatures in the mid-twenties and no summer humidity, this winter has been one of the mildest and therefore happiest. To cheer people up further, I offered free books at Vibe on Lunar New Year's Day and the second day of New Year. I think it pleasantly surprised those that came to the till to buy their books and were told the money wasn't required. It didn't cost me much and was well received, so I'll do it again. We started a new series of three interviews of environmentalists with Dr Merrin Pierce last week and this week I interview Jenny Quinton of Ark Eden. Jenny grew up in Cheshire in England and spent a lot of her childhood paddling in rivers and climbing trees. She started working part-time jobs when she was 12 so she could go on overseas adventures. She arrived in Hong Kong on a backpacking trip with her boyfriend in August 1989 and never left because she fell in love with Lantau. She has now been living in the same house in Moi Wo for 31 years. Her wake-up call for the environment happened a few years after she was living here when she had to stop her house nearly burning down due to vegetation fire started by grave sweepers. After that she joined lots of green groups and stood with them in the front line trying to protect the environment. She also began planting trees. She set up the first English kindergarten in Moiwo in 1991 and then later worked with English Schools Foundation as a primary school teacher helping to set up their environmental systems. She left ESF in 2006 to start Ark Eden and continued working with ESF as an environmental consultant for the next 10 years, organising many conferences and events. In 2011, she did a permaculture design certificate and got hooked and made permaculture a main focus of Ark Eden. Jenny is presently the project designer of Ark Eden and runs programmes for children and adults in everything pertaining to saving the planet. She also has now planted over 36,000 native trees on Lantau and so she is very pleased when it rains. She is training to become a yoga teacher so the children can do yoga in the forest. She is always working to save Lantau and the planet and her next dream is to create an outdoor forest school in her valley. Okay, so welcome to Vibe Jenny. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Pleasure. Okay, so as we do, uh, we'll go into 10 quickfire questions. Favourite book or author? A permaculture guidebook to East Timor. Oh, my God. (laughs) Because it is the book. It's actually completely covered in mud, and it looks dreadful, but it's the book I use the most. Yeah. You know, to just guide me around all the permaculture things. The, the, The person I read the most stuff from is actually he's called Daisaka Ikeda and it's okay. a lot of because I'm a Buddhist it's a lot of Buddhist guidance so right, there's right. favorite musical artist I love The Cure oh, actually god yeah <laughs> um, The Cure just reminds me of a time in my life when you know I was having the most fabulous time of my yeah. life I guess preferred drink tea 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 do you have a life motto dream big so favorite hong kong walk so i i we've created paths all around the valley with okay. the thirty-five thousand trees and we followed animal trails really 
So that the, yeah. it would go, it would really go, Radar the dog, which is yes. why she's called Radar. Radar the dog went first, uh-huh. you know, and I went with a little thing, and then people yeah. went behind me with a bit more, and we so we created. Right. I love that trail. Yes. Up, up all around the valley. Actually. Yeah. That's my. So your favourite would be the Ark Eden Trail that you've actually created yourself, then, mm, effectively. Mm. Do you have a favourite Hong Kong restaurant? China Beach Club, really. That would be mine yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah. Sitting on the balcony, looking out to sea. Faced with a python, walking up to the peak, what would you do? There is a python that lives in my valley, actually. Really? Yeah. It's not in a place that we generally go, but we ha- okay. I have a little part yeah. of it I call Python Path. So when we see it... You know, we we go the yeah. other, we go the other way, really, or we go past yes. carefully. The best advice you were given when I was backpacking, I met a friend, and she went off to Japan, and I went yeah. off to Australia, and then we were spent ages under the under a tree, you know, like you do in okay. Thailand yeah. when you're in your twenties, and discussing the meaning of life, and so then she sent me a letter from when I was in Australia and said, you know, I've got it. I've got the meaning of life. She told me to chant, chant Nami Horenga Kyo and, you know, everything. So I, I did, and I've done it for 30 years. That, and that is the best advice. Yeah. So you have a, what is it called, a chakra, isn't it? It's a you, mantra. A it's mantra. Right. How long would you normally chant it for? Look, don't fall off the sofa. You, I like to do three hours a day. Wow, yeah. okay. But I didn't, I did 45 minutes this morning because yeah. it was very busy. Because I've also started doing yoga. It's really hard to do, <laughs> like, four and a half hours of extra stuff in your day. Can but you combine both? No, can I can. I usually can. Yeah, so you I can do the can. chanting and the yoga at the same time. Yeah, so, yeah, if I can do... So, usually two hours in the morning and an hour at night. So, de-stressing, obviously, I would say, when you're chanting, you're, you're yeah. it's getting rid of stress. Are you fully concentrated on the chant when you're chanting, or are you then your mind goes off to kind of do other things so sometimes it does yeah but you but you get the best out of it if you can be present yeah if you can be present so myo is mystic okay it's like life death so it's it's really devote i it's really i devote my life to the mystic law of the universe so you're you're putting yourself in rhythm with the universe so if you if you decide the way you're going to exactly do everything, yeah. which I is my tendency to do a bit. Yeah. But that's okay. not necessarily the best way. So really the yeah. universe will try and adjust for you to, to make okay. that thing happen for you. Finish this sentence. I live in Hong Kong because... Because I totally love and believe in Hong Kong. So I really find my environmental mission here. You know, I found... Yes, because yeah. With, with, when when th- things happen to me here... You know, I really felt that this was the place that I needed to be. So that was very strong for me. 30 years, you know, extraordinary things have happened to Hong Kong. I mean, and look at Hong Kong now. I mean, Hong Kong, it was really like living in a a bubble where all the bad things, and you know, happened out there. And now everything is happening to us. Like we're centre stage of where the world is sort of, going to me hong kong is still the harbor of peace and it still can be the forerunner for the environment it's it's full of extraordinary people and you know we've we've got to change to a new way of doing things and i just feel like you know for hong kong we're being shaken we're being shaken you know and everybody's being shaken but you know i still totally believe in this yeah. place we've got to live peacefully really yeah and definitely. you know we're not doing very well with that right now because we're rubbing up against all sorts yeah. of different things but it's something the whole world has to yes learn yeah and then yeah i believe in us to lead the way i do what is your mm. favorite area of hong kong my valley yeah <laughs> <laughs> correct <laughs> i thought you'd say that we're going to talk about that i think up and coming but you've created something there out of death valley now it's life valley i guess mm. isn't it what made you come to hong kong in the first place so my yeah my dad was a pilot ah, so okay. i learned from quite a young age that if he yeah. signed these little forms yeah. then i could get cheap airplane tickets and and travel to places so i right. i i did this 
when yeah. from quite a young age. So then... So he wasn't actually a pilot in Hong Kong. He was a pilot in the UK. UK. He was, yeah. yeah. He was with okay. British Airways. He was a dam buster, my dad. No, yeah. re- he really? Was. Yeah, he was, actually. Full <laughs> respect to that. That's, oh, my God. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So, yeah, so he was... Uh, so I started travelling and doing all sorts of different things. And then I got into backpacking. So I okay. did, like, seriously long-haul backpacks. Yeah. You know, I, in, including getting Australian residency and going wow. to teacher training college. Uh, yeah, I was going to settle down in Australia, become a teacher and, you know, live happily ever after with my boyfriend. And yes. then I just had this burning desire to go to Tibet. Just one last trip to go to Tibet. Yes. And then it was 1989. So then Tiananmen happened. Oh, God, yeah. So Tibet was shut. Yeah. To cut a long story short, we'll stop in Hong Kong. We've both got British passports, so we can both earn some money, give it a few months, and we'll carry on again. Tibet didn't open. David actually got a really good job. It was so easy to get work here. Yes. And then, yeah. and I found my extraordinary, beautiful house yeah. that uh, I've lived in. So it was three weeks. We went to Lama because we decided it was an island that was needed. Right. The first right. weekend because we were job hunting all week. And yep. then we went to Chongqiao the second weekend. And then the third weekend, we went to yeah. Lantau. Found some puppies in the rubbish bin. We found three little puppies in the rubbish oh. bin. So we, we sort of fed them our sandwiches straight away. So we were thinking, oh, we've got to move now. We've got to move to Lantau because we have puppies. <laughs> At the top of Sunset Peak, we met Wolfgang. I know. <laughs> now, Wolfgang <laughs> works in the shop. Wolfgang is Mr. Monday here. And he told me about this meeting. Yeah, so let, let's, shall we hear a bit about it? Yeah. So, yeah, we said, look, hello, hello. We've got some puppies and we're looking for a, a yeah. flat. So he he knew about the flat yes. that we could move into. Yeah. And so we were gonna orga- he was going to organise that straight away. Uh, really? Also, would you like a puppy? No, he didn't want a puppy. Oh, but if you walk down to the gallery then somebody down there might yep. like a puppy because we thought three was quite a lot. So yes. Maybe yeah. we just needed one or two. So we went down to the gallery and we met Ian Dacre. Okay. okay. So Ian Dacre... I know took, Ian. I took knew one, Ian. Yeah, yes. He took one of the puppies. Yeah. Oh, then, did he? Yeah, which he had for a long, yeah. a long time, yes. that puppy. But he looked after all the puppies. Yeah. While we went to, you know, and we got our flat. And yeah. Then, so that's really, it's because we found. So kind of once you got here, Lantau grabbed hold of you, didn't yeah. it? Really, I mean. So we lived in that house for three yeah. months. We. Where was that? Was that in Moy? So Mo- uh, that, or... was, that was in Luc Tetong. Okay, right, yeah. That was in Luc Tetong. And yeah. then in Luc Tetong, there was, there's the pink temple. Yeah. Place. And we had some Chinese friends and they, every... Like every other Sunday, they had this huge vegetarian banquet that they served for all the elderly people. So okay. like 100 people or 150 people. So some Chinese right. friends of ours said, come and help. Because <laughs> I mean, it was really, so come and help us to wash the vegetables, serve the vegetables. So yeah. we, we used to go and help them. And then Miss, one day the lady around the temple, Mrs. Yeah. Say so, she said, do you want to see a house with a swimming pool? So I was, you know, this was, of course, this was yeah. dreams, Who dreams coming true. Yes. Yes, I want to see a house with a swimming pool. And then she, yeah, she took us to see the house. It hadn't been lived in for three years. It was, yeah, it was, I mean, it was wild. Yeah. But yeah, we, so we moved into that house. And so, and then, yeah. we, and then that was it, really. Yeah. And that's your story, really, yeah. sort of. You know, I would say it's a, be, it hasn't been an easy no. time at all here okay i had actually an extraordinary range of terrible things that really happened to me okay but i yeah and i left several times never to return again but i ah. returned again you find yourself here and then at some point in time you found Arkeden or Arkeden found you or, or mm. is that the order of the, the events i mean what made you suddenly think there's a dry barren valley here and i personally jenny need to do something about it 30 years ago there were really very there was there were trees in the little valleys but on the hills it was completely bare and i just i didn't really think about it that much i just thought that's the way it was 
And it wasn't till one day. It was a very bad Chung Yung day, where everything right. was on fire. And oh, I God. went to, and I came out onto my so Chung Yung grave sweeping day. Everybody goes up into the hills. There were there were hundred, fire to them. hundreds of fires. I think that one particular day. But I uh, I had no idea yeah. about this. I just ended up yeah fighting you know fighting a fire on on the hill. Which was near where your house was. Which was, yeah, above. Actually, I could see four fires from the the front, from the yeah. veranda. But I, the one I didn't see was the one coming down the oh, hill at the back of my house. And that's the one I went up to, yeah. And then I re that was my, so that was yeah. my wake-up call for the environment that particular day. And that, so it was a big realisation. I mean, really instantly that day, it was like, oh... This is why there's no trees, you know, because right. there are all these fires. Oh, it's Ching Ying and Chung Yung. You know, it's people just... Because in those yes. days, people yeah. were just deliberately setting fire to clear land. There was oh, no, they were. There okay. was no law. The right. only, the only So the firemen weren't fighting the fires on the hills in those ah. days. They were just letting them burn just when it was going to affect a property would they come in so they would just wait till everything came down sort of like okay. oh well if that's the problem then that's something i could do something about oh yeah. i don't know what to do oh well let's try and stop the fires and then yes and then i met paul you know paul melson was my friend okay right and i used to help him plant trees right and okay. then eventually when i started arc eden you know, he was really busy, you know, on his hill. It's like, well, maybe yeah. I could copy Paul and I could do something on this hill because there's a lot of hills yeah, that yeah, need yeah. planting. Yes. So, so this was how it... How, how it evolved. But, it, but yeah. it, it went through several years. Like, yeah. Paul is amazing at nagging departments until they will actually yes. do the thing. Because if you can go on long enough, yeah. if you can last long enough with your nagging... yeah. It will get done, sort of, okay. in the end. This is one of the things. But it, it Just take, to make you go away, basically. It takes you, yes, yeah. yes, please. Just to shut you up. Yeah, you're, please. You're becoming a problem now for us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 But how did you then get them to accept, well, I'm going to plant trees here on, on that land. and um... where, where Paul plants above the cemetery is lands department. And yeah. then you, where... I plant is North Atlanta yeah. Country Park extension. So that was it's sort of easy. But but yes. you, I mean it's like everything. I I sort of yeah I managed to get in just sort of at a good time as yes. well. You know it's everything is sort of a bit of a timing. For a while it's re it wasn't really now now they're allowing I think more yeah more organizations to plant trees. But yeah. you you had to really prove yourself but 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 paul had done he he knew all the process and he was a horticulturist he knew what right. he, he knows what he's yeah. doing i still yeah. don't i still really don't know what I'm, yeah. I'm doing but i know the system i know yeah. the process it is a really sort of lengthy process like yeah. everything okay have to very bureaucratic here anyway isn't it so yeah. so we're talking about sort of late 80s early 90s here when, you, when all so this 18, was happening. 89. Yeah. Here. Probably my re realization with the trees, early 90s. And then I started yeah. kindergarten. And then okay, I, yes. and then I, I pursued my teaching career. And then I sort of went English School Foundation. I was in the environmental consultant for ESF. Ah, for, right. Okay. For, for 10 years. I'm think. I'm always thinking. How can I do more? You know. How can I do more? Yeah. <laughs> this is working. But what about if we? Yeah. Yes. So so really, I I I had, I'd gone to English School Foundation, and there wasn't much happening with the environment. Yeah. At all. You know, it wasn't really on the agenda. So, I sort of just started creating it. Right. And in the end, like the principal <laughs> said, look, I think you know we need to give Jenny a post. Because yes. she's, you know, done this and she's done this and done this and we've got this award and this and so I mean, but they would do yeah. things like give yeah. me science or health or but, you know, <laughs> and I'd have to go off to science meetings and then I, oh, really? I wouldn't really understand properly. So I was like, look, can I just be environment? You know, can I just be me? <laughs> environmental rep. So in the end, yeah. I, I, and it was, I'm working with all the schools and 
trying to connect all the environmental reps, the teachers yeah. in the schools, and get student groups going. Yeah. And then one of the things I did was to say that the children needed to go out yes. uh, one trip once a once a term, so three times, and one of them should be an yeah. environmental trip. So then Good. I would take them yeah. tree planting, right, to Paul, and lots yeah. of people would. And then we would go to visit organic farms and we would go on all these things. But I realized there wasn't actually very much yeah. out there. And yeah. so I ended up sort of creating them for organizations yeah. to do them. So it came to yeah. the point where I thought, well, actually, I, I could do this. Yes. So yeah. that's where the Arch Eden idea was coming from. But also the fact that when we were out, the children and everybody was learning so much yeah yeah and you couldn't do that sort of stuff in the classroom yeah it was it, it was just a bit dry and boring in the yeah, classroom yeah you need to smell outside. and see and touch yeah yeah and they needed yeah. to be outside yeah yeah so i hadn't i hadn't really good. thought it through but it was just becoming good apparent answer. by what yeah. was happening so yeah. and free child labor for God's, you know, Absolutely. <laughs> you can't put a price on free child labour, can you? <laughs> <laughs> but I also realised, I mean, with the with starting Arc Eden, there was always stuff happening to Lantau yeah. all the time. Yeah, they were always wanting to pour lots of concrete all over yeah. Lantau from yeah. ever since you know I, <laughs> I arrived here really and yeah and and learnt about it. So the other thing was, if I if I had Arc Eden, I could just do environmental yeah. things because I was already very involved you know with the buffaloes uh, there was the green the Green Lantau Association was pretty gung-ho in those days and there was all this stuff happened when they wanted to build a super prison and hailing chow that was yeah. 2005 I think so there was a okay. big you know that which was yeah. something everybody managed to stop so there was always lots of energy that was needed for Lantau yeah as well yeah. to s kind of save it and sanctify the areas even though we are a national park we yeah. don't get in that sort of well we're there's not, all we're I mean, always there for prime real estate for I know something because else, yeah we? we're always you know eyes on the next land yeah. bank at some point you know you can't run something without some level of funding did you manage to get that how does that work not really so at the moment, it's actually been peddled by the parents, whether right. it's school programs, holiday yeah. p programs. Yeah. It's it's the parents paying to to right, keep okay. Arc Eden going. Yeah, it's always run itself on the programs, but it does limit what what you're able to do. Yeah. And then you have yeah. something like COVID yeah. that comes along. If yeah. you don't have any people yeah. in the picture at all, you know how yeah. how are we going to? Yeah, how Keep do you then cope? Yeah. Running at all then, so that was. I mean, really, wouldn't it make sense, you know, in COVID times, for, to get people out in the fresh air and see nature and you know, well, again, very this, low this instances is, this here. This is what in the people Hawaii. have done for themselves. Yeah, they've taken yeah. themselves out from the city and, yes. and taken themselves into the country. Actually, we've yeah. kept, we've kept going. We have kept going. Just a few times we you know shut shut down yeah you know when the yeah and then how how we're going to operate this time oh gatherings of four gatherings of two so each time we yeah. adjusted but with the 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 holiday programs have managed to keep going because yeah the parents yeah. want the children to go yeah. out. Yeah, <laughs> well, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, 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 for obvious reasons. <laughs> yeah, but they know... Yeah, but think, for the yeah. right reasons as well, yeah, for both they, reasons, I everybody, think. Everybody, <laughs> yeah, there's so much more realisation of, you know, what it, what, it, what it does to your brain to be yes. spending more time in nature. The, absolutely, yeah. And for um, children, how, yeah, they become more creative and imaginative and... Yes, They yeah. can learn to, you know, to take more risks... There's, they can more, you know, they can self-regulate themselves. You yeah. Know, they know when they need water, and there's so many benefits. They become more aware. Yes. You know all the emotional well-being. Parents can see, I think, a lot more the value of nature, but also the value of play. Yeah. I think this is one of the. I've I've only properly learned this this year. I had an extraordinary learning month in yeah. January. Yeah. Okay. And one of the, I mean, one of the things that I really realized from talking to the children was all they want is unstructured play 
okay. you ask them. So I'll say, you know, yeah. do, did you prefer Wizard of, Wizard of Oz or what about Palace in the Sky or what about The Fifth Element or A Day on the Farm? Yeah. And they were like, yeah, 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 they're all fantastic, but yeah. just we want to do what we want to do. We okay. Wanna, we want to choose our own thing. So at the beginning, yeah. like if you, because there's children who have never, ever done unstructured play outside yeah, you know you it's put quite them, sad you, isn't it to think about yeah that. so yeah. at the beginning they you know they need to well you know here's the mud kitchen and here's yeah the, here's the strap line and you know we can do this and we can do and there's lots of different things that they can yeah do. How we but, grew up as kids actually but in, in the family. end yeah they yeah. you know it's that imaginative play it's where yeah. where that house you know and making dens yeah and, and making up their own yeah. games not being given yes. activities experiences because that's what and that's that's yeah yeah so it, i really only i completely got that when they told me so we yeah. haven't had any schools for a year we haven't had wow. we've had two like company programs in the last year so all of wow. all yeah. of that has completely dropped so this yeah. is, these are just chinese new year holiday day camp programs it's a little bit different yeah i mean it's it's really hard right now because everybody's you know tortoise drawing back into the shell when you're getting those mandarin kids coming up the hill and the, the local schools where are they finding out about arcade and how are they, i don't you know because you know? i don't know because I, I mean at the that, moment that's the magic isn't it yeah i mean we're not really advertising very much because yeah. we're just trying to keep well it's expensive isn't it well we kind of just keep things low uh, and we have a carrying capacity and we've got to think about social distancing so yeah. we we can't be too yeah because yeah. like yesterday when it really rained and we have to yeah. go undercover i mean we've just we've got we're using the two houses and we've got some covered space and it's chilly it's not like it is in the summer yeah, it was it, cold yesterday it doesn't, yeah. Yeah, it doesn't matter every radiator going trying to <laughs> dry and they're, they're, yeah. they're, they're, they're standing you know under the dripping water just getting wet like so this, this. is it's nature like, is it <laughs> yeah. yeah sometimes you yeah, want to you, pull them back and say yeah it's not that bad so so i think Good. it's word of mouth yeah. it's the most effective I think in the end, though, I mean, one of my things is, you know, I want to create more Arc Edens. I mean, there's yeah. so many of us. We love, we love Lantau, don't we? Yeah, absolutely. We... I do deeply. Um, I, I will not leave this island. I want my ashes to be scattered here. So, and I, I had can, that deep I, love quite can, early. Yeah. You can, yeah. You can be. A, you can become a tree. I'd love to be a tree. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. And this is where I spend my life. Mm. So I have some pretty, yeah. I have some dynamic interns that I work with and uh, some other student groups. But we, we created an alternative Lantau Tomorrow plan. Okay. That generally puts, uh, that really says well, a much better idea for Lantau is to make it the green space. Yeah. So green education, mm -hmm. uh, ecotourism. Yes. And yeah. so things like that we will school, you know, as a as yeah. a green school and a green hub and having trips. They can do that with lots of different yes. places. Everything you can have a lot of multifunction yeah. actually going. But there's a lot of the sort of eco tourism that is also doing regenerative sort of yes. agriculture. Trees. at the roots level of it yeah. yeah and you've got all these community mm. providers it also had the idea of a of a of a lantau yeah. university that was a leading eco state of the art conservation yeah you know this re the real idea of so this is you know the the green jewel concept creating green spaces you need millions of people transforming and creating their own their, bits, green, their yeah. own green green and green and blue spaces you know you you joining together but helping yeah. each other if somebody wants to make a garden or somebody wants to plant trees or garden outside here and more i'd love to have a garden and... outside here the last one went missing <laughs> one night i thought it was the buffalo but i'm not sure now the, now the pot's gone <laughs> this is the new green tomorrow yeah. The new, you know, what does the new green economy look like, and yeah. what are the new jobs in that economy? Yeah. yeah. I mean, and I, I mean, I have students who ask me what degree they have to do to do yeah. my job, and I sort of say, well, 
actually yeah. it hasn't really been invented yet. I would say the one key thing yeah. these kids have to be able to do is to reinvent themselves many times. So they need, yeah. they've got to think out the box. I mean, I have such fantastic leaders right now yeah. because they've lost their job as a kindergarten teacher because the kindergarten yeah. closed down. They they can't do be a basketball coach because the school's not open. Can't go back and do cryptocurrency in yeah. Philippines because they can't. And yeah. you know, on and on. And they yeah. and they're extraordinary. But Skills, this is a people. year of dancing and singing and trying lots of different yes. things. And and then you know as you going back to the basics. Do things. Extent, you know you you it? fill your toolbox with all yeah. the different. Yeah. Different oh, types I can make a, oh, I can make a solar oven. Oh, I know how to do compost. Oh, yeah. you know, this is how you do mung bean face wash. And suddenly yeah. they're able to pull yeah. so many rabbits out of so many hats. Okay, so how would people get in touch with Ark Eden? We have a website, Ark Eden on Lantau, org. And then it's we have an info at Ark Eden on Lantau, dot org. You know, it's really, I think one of the next things we really need to do, joining together as... A community to start creating the world we want like Mui Wall has so many things yeah. going for it now and Lantau and you know all these extraordinary people that come through you know your doors but really once we we start working at things together together yeah yeah, yeah. that's I mean yeah. I I am going to get better at it next week because somebody is yeah. going to come and work with us <laughs> who will you know it means I'm not doing five yeah. different jobs and yeah and that is my main thing because really then once you're with people and talking to people yeah you're going to come up with an idea of something yes. that you can do because really it's no use having oh you know Jen is the eco person and you know this is we all are the eco person and we've got yeah. to improve how we you know we do things in our own homes and and lives you know the sustainable part and then start joining together as a community of how we're going to do things so really yeah. i mean if our dream like the dream i just sort of said of of hong kong being the green space and the green provider yeah. i think i just want people to just do their best to help save the planet really Thus, i want them to believe it's possible and then just to think of what different things they could do that's my main thing and that save the planet isn't an organization that you just give money and they go and save it for you Save the Planet is something that you actually come along to and and start to save. Mm. Do the saving, do the do, rather than pay for somebody else to do the do. Yeah, you do something with the hands. Yeah. In yeah. some way, anything, really. Okay, I'd just like to say, Jenny, thank you very much for coming. Um, thank you very much for having me. Okay. Pleasure. You can listen to all of our podcasts published at SoundCloud under Gary Brightman or on YouTube under Live at Vibe HK or follow the links from my website at vibehk.com If you'd like to be interviewed for the weekly podcasts or have a local Lantau business you want mentioned then please contact me at Vibe. Finally, a reminder that Vibe is open seven days a week every day of the year from 12 noon until approximately 6.30 each evening. Well, that's it for another week. Thanks for tuning in to part 18 of Vibrations Podcasts. I'm Gary Brightman. You get my vibe? Can you imagine what this old island must have looked like to those Dutch sailors when they first saw it? Fresh green. Like a dream of a new world. They must have held their breath. Afraid it would disappear before they could touch it.